tell you what, you have to give the champs credit, right? In the end, in MLS, New York City FC, they beat Montreal, the favoured Montreal, the Montreal Gazette. Not happy about it. Uh, CF Montreal can't crawl from deep chasm. Or is it chasm? I think I'll go with chasm after seeding 3-0 lead to New York City FC. I'm so happy that Mike is here today <laughs> because I know the Montreal faithful out there want to hear what he has to say here. Um, it, it's one of those games though, right, where if you look at the stat line, Montreal should have won this game. They, they bossed most of the numbers except for the scoreline. And I guess you give you know, the, the goalkeeper so much credit for New York City. Um, in the end though, you just don't rule out the champs in these situations, I guess. Yeah, and that's what it was. It was, you know, in the first half, Sean Johnson made a couple of spectacular saves to keep New York City ahead because they went ahead early in the game. And New York City capitalized on their chances in the first half. They had two chances. They scored on both of their chances. And that has something to do with what I was saying earlier. And you can't really trust Montreal's defense. They were only put under pressure a handful of times in that first half. And twice they conceded. That's not a recipe for success in the playoffs especially. And the other thing is, listen, they have a good roster. They have a lot of talented players. They lack difference makers. And that's what you saw. They didn't have the guy that would step up and make that final pass, that final finish. And the end result was, yeah, they're, they're on the outside looking in now after what was really a, a strong, good season, probably their best season in club history. You wanted to about New York City. Um, Castellanos leaves mid-season and they go into a bit of a, a decline, a bit of a, a um, well, let's be honest, they were great and then they were not great. Mm -hmm. Far from it. Could it be now that they've found themselves once again and they're a team that not many people have picked out to do too well in the playoffs, but a team that, who knows, could go a long way? Yeah, and it sets up a, a really enticing semifinal against Philadelphia, a rematch of last year. Now, if you remember last year's semifinal, again, at Subaru Park in Philadelphia, New York City went to Philadelphia, but they ended up facing a Philadelphia side that was missing 11 players because of protocols. Mm -hmm health and safety protocols. So now it's, you know, maybe there was an asterisk over New York City's mm -hmm. championship run last year because of that. They ended up winning that game 2-1, I believe. Now they have a chance to sort of rewrite history and prove any doubter wrong. As you mentioned, halfway through the year, they lost, lost Ronnie Dyla. They, they lost Tati Castellanos. Everyone's essentially writing this New York City FC team off. The results, I mean, they justified why people should write them off. But they still have guys like Sean Johnson, Maxi Morales, everyone, that's, and all their veterans. Is, they're stepping up right now for New York City FC. They have the experience. And yeah, I think they're clicking at the right time and they could be a threat to, to go all the way here. And now for a really big offseason for Montreal, just huge. Mihailovic's leaving, of course. Kone's probably leaving. Mm -hmm. you, you wonder what the Canadian boys for Miller and Johnston, if they have a good World Cup, what happens to them as well? Um, if you're Montreal, this, this may not be the start of something. It could be the start of, of potentially a rebuild this offseason. Well, we've seen it with TFC. I mean, look at what they're rebuilding and kind of going through that process. And we'll probably see the same thing for Montreal. I mean, you know better than me, but when you lose so many key players, there are going to be holes and you have to fill them. And will you find the right player to fill them right away? Likely not. It takes time. So I think we'll see them probably struggle more next season because they're going through something similar that we just saw Toronto kind of go through. Yeah, it's going to be massive losses for this team. The one thing I do like is Wilfred Nancy. And as long as he's there, I believe that this Montreal team will remain competitive because he's built and fostered such an amazing culture over there. Um, and like I said, he got the best out of his team, I believe, this year. So as long as Wilfred Nancy stays, who knows how long that'll be. <laughs> But as long as he stays, I do believe Montreal will be contenders. All right, over now to England and, and the Sun, renowned for its great headlines. Uh, total mess. <laughs> Referring to Spurs, of course, losing to Newcastle, Sierra. Um, you listen, a lot of injuries are costing Spurs right now. They lose with Charleston, Glisewski, of course, and you've seen the results as a result going the wrong way. Um, this table is crazy so far this year, but I guess we must give Newcastle a lot of credit as well. Yeah, I had them to actually win this game. I felt like, I don't know, they've been doing really well. They have a really solid squad, but also it was more so that Tottenham have kind of been on this weird decline. I don't trust their football. And we talked about last week how they've had the best start to their season this year. 
and then since that, they've lost three games in a row. It's very interesting, very telling. I don't know what's going on with Conte. I still wasn't sure if he was the right fit for this team. I guess we'll see. Still a lot of season left. But yeah, like you mentioned, Kulisevsky, Richarlison, Emerson, all injured. Definitely, you know, hitting that team really hard. Yeah, the right side especially. And yeah. Kulisevsky, in my opinion, he's so important to that team. He is he's one of their best players. Mm -hmm. And when he's out, I think that team's missing a certain dimension coming off that right wing that he just adds. And I think we're seeing that. But we also have to remember, okay, they're going through this little rut here. They're still, what, third in the table. They're still top of their table in the Champions League. I don't think it's time to... Panic? Panic, sound any sirens <laughs> right just yet. Um, but on the other hand, Newcastle. I mean, they look like a team that... Top four right now. Against any team that they're <laughs> playing, they look like they're in the game. And what a difference a year has made for Newcastle. If you think about where they were like a season ago at this time, shambles. But they went through this renaissance let's call it and now they've turned back the clock and look like the newcastle of old which i think for the premier league as, as a whole i think it's great to see yeah yeah it seems every time we mention newcastle doing well we, we feel we have to mention off the field and the ownership group and that controversy right but that's for another show okay <laughs> let's give him credit on the field eddie has done a great job there he really has and uh yeah top four and, and who knows you know the the Apple cart has been upset mm -hmm. and the big boys don't like Newcastle and all the money because they'll spend again in January and looking pretty good right now. So that's fascinating. Um, Nottingham Forest, <laughs> Liverpool. Um, yeah, well, this happened. <laughs> Cup, lovely touch, lovely ball, and it's in by Awani. You give me a lot of credit, listen. I mean, good for, good for Forrest. This is a game that back in the 70s and 80s when I first discovered football was the big match. And, you know, Forrest have had such a tough year so far, Sarah, but they've just found a way to get at Liverpool, who were building momentum, beat Man City last week, now lose to Forrest. It just shows how, how great this, this league is at the moment. So unpredictable. It's great, though, isn't it? You cut, week in and week out, we think that these, you know, matchups that are looking pretty one-sided... You watch them and it shows to be the complete opposite. Like Nottingham, don't get me wrong, I still think they're going to be struggling this season. Will we see them get relegated? I don't know. But to beat Liverpool, it's great for the team. Jesse Lingard finally has something, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for them, but I don't think we will see them do well this season overall. Yeah, what's that headline, James? Yeah. Oh, the headline. Oh, I was trying to avoid that one. Uh, Nottingham Forest believe they can be anyone after defeating Liverpool. Well, listen, maybe if they're beating the Reds of seasons past, but this team, to me, looks aging and declining at some point. I'm happy um, you said it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> listen, they're, they're still a pretty good team. They'll still be in contention for top yeah. four football, but uh, I think that squad needs to be uh, revamped somewhat. Um, you know, Brennan Johnson gets benched by Steve Cooper, who hey, hasn't been great so far this year, Brennan Johnson, but in comes um, former Liverpool man, uh, Taiwo Awaniyu. And I have to look at it and read it here because he, he isn't known at all. Comes in, scores a winning goal. So good for him. Um, the table, by the way, 11 through 20 right now. There's just four say. points between them. It's a three-way tie for bottom spot at the moment. Nine points. It's so good. It is the Prem. It is wonderful. It is so exciting. <laughs> um, despite my team having some stumbles uh, along the way. All right. Time for a break. Uh, when we come back, we have some, some World Cup action. Group A we'll look at deeply. And before then, the Champions League. Match day five begins on Tuesday. It's rapid fire time.